It's truly a privilege and a blessing to be in the house of God one more time. When you look back over our life and think about how good God's been to us, He's been great. We always say that, God, we're thankful that you, we thank you, God, for life, strength, and health, and somebody last night didn't wake up this morning. The fact that we're on this side of heaven, we should be happy. Too often we come to church and we sit down on God as if God had been good to us. Has he not been a bridge over troubled waters? Has he not made a way when things seem bleak? God is great. To be praised. For those who are able, let's rise to our feet. Let's read a scripture from Psalms 100, verse 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is good. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. And into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you just for this day. We thank you for this pre anniversary celebration. Because God, we know that with you all things are possible. God, we owe you a debt of gratitude. Because oftentimes, God, you bless us even when we don't bless your name. God, you've forgiven us over and over and over again. Oftentimes, God, we worship you based on condition. We always say, God, if you bless me, God, then I praise you. God, you are always worthy to be praised. Father God, I ask that, God, you just continue to cover all of us. And to our guest speaker, even though she's not a guest here at Mount Calvary, she's family. Yes. Ask you, Lord, to strengthen her where she's weak, cover her in everything she does. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
if it wasn't. sound good. Come on, say Lord. Lord, you are awesome. Come on, we serve an awesome God. Lord, Lord, you are awesome. Come on, if it wasn't. If it
Come on, put your hands together. If you keep making a way, come on, you ought to open your mouth and bless him. He's made a way over and over and over again. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth. Hallelujah. Come on, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. How many glad to be in worship on this evening? Amen. God is good and he is indeed greatly to be praised. Listen, if you be, I know we have quite a few guests, but if you don't mind, just turn to someone and say good evening. Listen, you have so many choices where you can uh, choose to worship God. Thank you for choosing this place as your place of worship on this evening. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Listen, let's prepare our hearts to give. Listen, it's indeed, it's indeed, it's a blessing to give. The Bible uh, lets us know that the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, and those that dwell therein. Listen, and this is, with any time we have an opportunity to worship, this is an opportunity where we can give back to a God who has given you and I so, so much. And so listen, we're grateful for this opportunity. If you need an envelope, feel free to raise your hand. One of the ushers will be more than happy to provide you with one. Uh, to those of you also worshiping with us online, we need to say thank you for coming, to taking this time to worship with us. You, again, you have so many choices where you can choose to worship God. We thank you for choosing this place as your place of worship as well. You too can participate in giving. Just feel free to download the Tidely app. Search Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Owensboro, Kentucky, and there you'll be able to give in a secure way. Are you ready to give, church? Amen. You're ready to give. Be so kind to bow your heads. Let's ask God to bless our time in giving. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to give. Thank you because we recognize every good and perfect gift comes from above. Lord, we pray that you receive our gifts. We pray that it be for the building of your kingdom. And these things we ask in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're in the hands of our ushers. opportunity to say thank you so much for your participation in giving church it was wonderful and let me tell you it's preaching time let's give God great praise for that Listen, we're grateful we're grateful that this month we get to celebrate 88 years of kingdom building Amen. it's a wonderful opportunity where we could take a moment to pause and reflect and to thank God for God uh, blessing us for 88 years. Amen. Listen, I also always tell our church uh, that we ought not ever get to a point where we ever forget that God has kept us for 88 years. Listen, there's so many churches who unfortunately didn't make it after the pandemic. And so we ought not ever get to a point of having what I call spiritual amnesia. Uh, that we ever forget that God is the one who's kept us so far. 
so tonight I'm grateful to have, of course, she's no stranger to our church, but grateful to have Elder Natasha Swanigan, pastor of the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And let's say, be so kind, let's give her a great hand. I thought it definitely not a robbery. There have been, of course, many times where, of course, she's no stranger. She's taught our Bible studies on many occasions, especially in my absence. And so I wanted to give this definitely an opportunity for her to come and her church family to come and to share with us as we celebrate uh, 88 years of kingdom building. Amen? Amen. Listen, I mean, you've heard, of course, our church, you know kind of the drill by now. There can't be fire in the pulpit if there's ice in the pews. And so this is the, I, we want to make uh, this space, sacred space, a place of where preaching is easy. We're not going to make the preacher preach hard. You know, if the preacher is saying something that we can attest with, we ought to give them, give her our full support and, her, and our full amens. Amen. So listen, after the next lecture from the choir, the next preaching voice we shall hear is the Elder Natasha Swanigan. If you could be so kind of stretch your hands toward the preacher, say, Elder Swanigan, preach the word. Elder Swanigan, preach the word. And we will be a witness. And after the next lecture, Elder Swanigan will come in her own way.
doing, that's a good time to worship. If he's working it out, you ought to open your mouth and bless the Lord. Come on, open your mouth and bless him. Come on, everybody. He's working it out. because he is my life. He's my creator. He's my refuge. He's my strength. He's my fortress. He's my rear guard. Oh, yes, he is. He's my way maker. He's my healer. He's my salvation. He's my all in all. I honor the shepherd of this house. 
Jesus, great man of God, amen, and the Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Parks. The more I get to know him, the better I like him. Truly, I honor my bishop who is in the house on tonight, Bishop Ina Jean Taylor, yes, Lord. Wonderful woman of God. And I'm glad that PGT is in the house tonight. Oh, yes. It's just good to look out and see your faces on today. And of course, Mount Calvary, you know when I come here, I don't feel like a stranger. I feel like I'm at home. So I'm going to give it to you just like I would at home. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we honor you on tonight. Oh God, and we ask you to come in and make your abode in this place, God. And Lord, I ask as the seeds of your word go out among your people tonight. Lord, I pray that your word don't fall on stony ground tonight. Oh God, because the stone don't have any depth of earth. Oh God, and the heat from the fiery trials can come and wither it away. And Lord, I pray that your word don't fall among thorns tonight. Oh God, so that the cares of this world don't come and choke it out and we forget that we should know the truth and the truth will make us free. And Lord, please don't let your word fall by the wayside tonight so that the enemy can't come in and steal it from us. But oh Lord, I pray that your word falls on good ground. Let it fall on good ground. Bring forth fruit tonight, Lord. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's go to the scripture on tonight. And we're gonna go to Nehemiah. And prepare your legs, we're gonna read just a little bit. So get you a firm foundation and stand. Nehemiah, the second chapter, and we're going to begin at verse 1. And it came to pass in the month, in the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was made before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence, Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid, and said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad, when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lies waste? and the gates there are of are consumed with fire. Then the king said unto me, for what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said unto the king, if it please the king, and if thy servant has found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchers, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, for how long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Moreover, I said to the, unto the king, if it please the king, let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. And let a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that uh, he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace which appertain to the house, and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of, of my God upon me. If I'm going to use any type of thought that you can carry away with you on tonight, I want to, well, first of all, do this for me. Flip over just a little bit. 
to Nehemiah 4 and look at verse 6. It says, so built we the wall and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof for the people had a mind to work. So if I leave a thought with you on tonight, it would be it's time to work. It's time to work. They sang the song, he's working it out for my good, but what are we doing to work for him? He's working on our behalf, but what are we doing to work for him? So in this passage of scripture, we see Nehemiah heartbroken because of some news that he had received concerning the remnant of the Jews who had escaped exile and about the condition of Jerusalem. You see, even though Nehemiah was an Israelite, uh, he did not grow up among his people because he was born during the time of captivity and eventually he came to serve in the king's palace. And it was in a very influential position as the king's cupbearer. Now, I don't know if you all know what a cupbearer to the king does, but you know when people are in positions of power, people sometimes are out to get them. And uh, before they get to the king, they were going to have to go through that cupbearer because they wasn't going to set something before him uh, that the cupbearer didn't partake of. And so if something happened to the cupbearer, they knew not to give it to the king. Amen. And so because the cupbearer was there, amen, the likelihood of them trying to do something to the king became less. So he was in an influential position. He was close to the king. He had the king's ear. And when he received uh, this news, he was able to go to the king. However, Nehemiah's position in the king's palace did not cause him to be indifferent to what was going on among his people. Don't get so comfortable where you are that you lose sight of where God wants to take you. Sometimes you might be in the king's palace, but somebody is suffering without. Somebody's suffering at the gate. You're not everybody could go up to the king. Some people had to suffer without the gate. So don't you get comfortable thinking you have arrived and forget where you came from. Your location is not always your destination. Sometimes God will place you where you are to get you where you need to be to do the work that needs to be done so that God can get the glory. Sometimes where you are is not just for you. You see, God allowed Moses to be placed in Pharaoh's house, but after Moses came to maturity, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy pleasures of sin for a season. See, sometimes the pleasures of sin only last for a season. Amen. But the things of God are eternal. Amen. You got to be where God wants you to be and you even though he was in Pharaoh's house he could have stayed there but he chose to do the things of God God placed Joseph in Potiphar's house so he could connect him with Pharaoh in order to save a nation from starvation and reconnect him to his family uh, Joseph had to run out of his clothes to do the will of God but he was willing to do just that in order to do the will of God sometimes we got to come out of ourselves amen to do the will of God we got to come down off of our high horse amen before God knocks us off like he had to do Paul Saul before his name was changed to Paul but sometimes God's got to get our attention. And in order to shift from where you are and advance to where God wants you to be, it's going to take some work. So when Nehemiah heard of the desolation of Jerusalem, it made him sad and it made him weep. 
Oh, yes, it did. But how many of you know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning? Nehemiah, Nehemiah realized that he needed to stop crying and get to work. We get so hung up in our own pity parties, oh, in our own self, amen, that we can't see the work of God. But sometimes you got to stop crying. Sometimes you got to stop whining. Sometimes you got to stop getting in your own head. Sometimes you got to just get to work. God's looking for some people to work. The army says they're looking for a few good men. So is God. He's looking for a few good It's going to take some work. So the first thing Nehemiah did was fast and pray. Jesus even told his disciples that some things can only be accomplished through prayer and fasting. Let me tell you something. We don't fast no more. Uh Uh-huh, we say, uh, Pastor called for a fast, I'm gonna give up social media. I I, 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 I ain't gonna uh, uh, binge watch Brigaton or whatever the popular thing is now. That's what I'm gonna fast. But church, I think we got it twisted because when Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and was led of the spirit out into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The Bible said he was hungry. That means he had done without something to eat. Amen. We don't want to turn over that plate because we made our belly our God. But I'm telling you, sometimes you got to turn your plate over. You got to push it back so that God can get to you. Amen. You don't have to worry about and you don't have to worry about heartburn. You don't have to worry about where the tongues are hidden. Amen. But you can be emptied so God can fill you up. He fasted and he prayed. He wanted to hear from the Lord. He didn't just jump up and start doing stuff. I think it said it was four months later. He waited on God. See, we don't wait on God for him to tell us what needs to be done. We seek his hand, but we don't seek his face. We need to begin to fall on our faces and begin to seek the will of God and ask him, Lord, what would thou have me to do? Because see, God will give the vision. And where he gives the vision, he'll supply the provision. But you have to work it out. He did it for Nehemiah. Oh, yes, he did. He told Nehemiah exactly what to do. He said, Nehemiah, you go into the presence of the king and you look sad because you had never looked sad before and that'll get his attention. And after he had the king's attention, then he asked permission. See, we don't ask permission no more. We just start doing things our own way, however we want to do it. We don't ask permission, amen, but Nehemiah asked permission from the king. And the king said, well, how how long you going to be gone? Because see, you my cupbearer, and I trust you, amen, but how long you going to be gone? And he said, such and such, and he said, so the king set a time, or he set a time, Nehemiah set a time. And the king said, okay, but this is what I like about it. Because he sought the Lord, and the Lord heard, and he answered. Oh, yes, he did. Nehemiah said, oh, 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 thank you, king, for letting me go, but can you give me a letter? So while I'm traveling, when I run into these governors, I won't have no trouble. I won't have no problem. They'll give me safe passage. Oh, 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 and king. If you don't mind, can you also give me a letter, amen, to the manager of your forest so they can give me a little material to work with? Nehemiah didn't mind asking.
question. He had work to do, and he didn't mind asking for a little help. Amen. From the king. See, when God gives you an assignment, he ain't going to leave you out there by yourself. Oh, no, he ain't going to leave you out there by yourself. He going to make sure you got what you need. And God gave Nehemiah some people to come alongside of him and work with him. And they were able to rebuild the gates and the walls of Jerusalem because the people had a mind to work. We got our mind on so many things. Amen. We are all bogged down with the weight of the world. But don't you know this is not your home? The things in this world are temporary that you working so hard to get but if you will work in the kingdom of God and let God bless you he'll give you the world all good things to enjoy the willing and the obedient they're gonna eat the good of the land all you gotta do is trust in God all you gotta do is wait on God all you gotta do is do it his way he'll take care of you he ain't go, there's no lack and there's no limitation in God. He gonna make sure you got everything you need cause you his people. You the head and not the tail. You above and not beneath. But God will give you some people. Not everybody gonna stand with you. Oh yeah, they'll say they'll stand with you. You look around. We sang a song, I looked to my left, I couldn't find nobody. I looked to my right, but I still couldn't find nobody. Oh, but all you got to do is look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Oh, you'll find him. He said, if you seek me with all of your heart, if you seek me early, you'll find me. Listen, children of the Most High God, there's a warning going out for us to get ready and get to work because Jesus is coming back and he's coming back soon and he's coming back for a people who have made themselves ready. I ain't never seen nothing be made without no work. Try making a cake and don't work. Don't stir it. Don't crack an egg. Don't put it in the oven. You'll be waiting a long time to eat a piece of cake. The main thing we need to work on is our soul. Philippians 2 and 12 says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen, we're in this way, and we're going to have to work to stay on this narrow world. Amen, that God has put us on. Amen, because it is a narrow way. Amen, it is a straight walk. Oh, yes, it is. But you're going to have to work to stay on the road. Well, you say, Swanigan, how you do that? Well, first you work on refining your walk with God. Start taking off the old man and putting on the new man, which is renewed daily in Christ Jesus. Stop coming. Come on out of some of that old stuff, some of that worldly stuff. Make a difference between clean and unclean. Make a difference between holy and unholy. Make a difference between righteous and unrighteous. Amen. If you blending in, you on your way out. Amen. But he told me to come out from among them and be separate. I'm supposed to be doing, be different. Amen. Because I'm a royal priesthood. Royalty is different. Work on refining your walk with God. One thing I preach at PGT is that the next thing is we're going to have to get back to reverence in the house of God. Everything ain't acceptable in the house. Every attitude ain't acceptable in the house. Every conversation ain't acceptable in the house. 
But see, you won't have a hard time with that because you don't refine your walk. Start respecting the men and women God has placed over you to shepherd you in your salvation journey. God gave them to you. He said, I give you pastors and apostles and preachers and teachers. Amen. What for? For the perfecting of the saints. Amen. For the perfecting of the saints. And he placed them there. And if he placed them there, you ought to give them reverence. If they're doing something you don't like, pray for them. Take them up before the Lord. Fast on their behalf. And most of all, get to work keeping the command Jesus gave us in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. He won't leave you alone. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you. You don't have to worry if nobody else wants to go. I'm with you. If everybody else is standing against you, I'm with you. You got somebody on your side. You got somebody in your corner. But let me give you this heads up. When you put your hand to the plow to work, amen, there are going to be mockers. There's going to be scoffers. The enemy's going to stand at the ready to hinder your progress. Nehemiah and those with him faced that same opposition, but they kept on working. They worked with a tool in one hand and a weapon to fight the enemy in the other hand. God will give you what you need, but there's one thing for sure. God don't need no spectators, and he can't get the glory out of no lazy Christians. So people of God, it's time to work. Bless your name, oh God. Yes, sir. Listen. Listen, if you're in the sanctuary, you'd be so kind of stand on your feet. Somewhere here today, unsaved or unchurched, may not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, don't put off tomorrow. What you can do for today, tomorrow may be too late. Real question becomes, if something would happen to you tonight as soon as you leave church, and if the question is, if you don't know where exactly you will spend eternity, today would be a wonderful day to give your life to Jesus Christ. I think one of the easiest ways we can get to work is making sure, one, that Jesus Christ is in our hearts. And so many times we have our understanding that so many things we have is a resource, but many times we forget that Jesus is the true source. And maybe you're connected, you have all the degrees, you have all the money, but perhaps you don't have Jesus Christ in your life. And if that's you again, today would be a wonderful day to give your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe you say, well, Reverend, I'm, I'm, I'm saved, or maybe I've fallen out of the will of God. And if that's you, again, today would be, again, a wonderful day to rededicate your life to the work of ministry. I've discovered so many of us want the church to be magnificent, but all many of us at times are unwilling to invest. With that being said, again, today would be a good day to say, I'm going to... I'm going to ask God to change my heart so I can get to work and to carry out the mission and the purpose that God has for my life. So if you be so kind, every head bowed, every eye closed, all I want to do is I want to take a moment to pray for you that perhaps the Lord would touch your heart to make a decision.
So let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us that it's time for us to get to work. Lord, there are times where we have taken our salvation for granted. So Lord, bless my brother, bless my sister, and remind them, Lord, that there's still purpose and destiny on our lives. But we have to get to work. These things we ask your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you could be so kind, come on, put your hands together. Give God more praise. I know perhaps we still have someone praying. Of course, there's always a time for prayer as well. Uh, Many of you know the devil is busy. And listen, I strongly believe there's so much that's going on in the country that I strongly believe that if anything is going to take place in a positive way, you and I must be willing to go to God in prayer. Uh, 1 Peter 5 lets us know that you and I are able to cast all of our cares upon him. Uh, because he cares for us. James says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. So it'll be so kind, just well, I want to just allow you to pray quietly and in your spirit, but let's just take a moment uh, to pray and let's seal that word in prayer. And thank you all so much for coming and worshiping with us. And Church of the Living God, let me say thank you so much for coming and worshiping with us. Mount Calvary, if you could be so kind, let's give them a great hand. <laughs> Amen. And while you're clapping, let's give the preacher a great hand as well. Amen. 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 God is good and he's worthy. Uh, to be praised. Listen, it's still early, church. Still early. Still early. Looking, looking forward to having a great time in God on this coming Sunday as we continue our series. And so, of course, church, of course, uh, let me say about Calvary, with it being the 88th church anniversary, again, this is a wonderful time and a great month. Uh, the word of the preacher, and I'm going to keep using it uh, to get to work. You've heard, you've heard me heard me say uh, that uh, people won't come to church unless you invite them. And so listen, this is a wonderful opportunity. I strongly believe, like you've heard me also say, that no one's going to, if you don't like your church, nobody else will. Uh, So this is an opportunity to get to work. Just turn to somebody and say, get to work. Get to get to work. Get to work. Listen, 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 get, get to work, get to work. And so uh, I, I, I admit, I, I want to I wanna see, who knows, there may be a prize for somebody who brings the most visitors on Sunday. It, it might be, it, it might be, we don't know. It may be, it may, may be. I, I want to see who's going to bring the most visitors on, on Sunday morning. You, you never know what the Lord has in store, what, what the Lord has in store. But once again, it's been a wonderful time. Looking forward, of course, worshiping God, specifically on the fourth Sunday as we come together and more in a uh, celebratory where we'll, we'll come to worship God and celebrate 88 years of kingdom building. Amen. Amen. But until then, let me give you this blessing. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, allow it to rest, reform, and renew this day and the days ahead. Until we meet at Jesus' feet, the bishop of the church, the bishop of our souls. Go in peace, go in love, go and serve. Have a wonderful evening. God bless. You.